Welcome to You Can Do It. I'm your host, Chris, and in this video, I'm going to be installing an Orbit 4 station sprinkler timer, irrigation timer. Um, it's going to operate these four valves down here. We're going to wire it up, install it, and show you how to program it. So stay tuned. We'll show you how you can do it. All right, so let's open it up and see what we got in here. It's a nice, this can be mounted indoor and outdoor. It is a sealed box. I'm putting this in our greenhouse. So it's got the instructions in here, some screws. It also has a pattern here that you put on the wall to mount it. it shows you the screw pattern so you don't have to sit there and guess, figure out where it's going to go. This mounts on the wall and it shows you where to place the screws for mounting. Um, and then also it gives you some anchors here wall anchors if you're putting it in sheetrock we're mounting this on a wood block so let's open it up to see what it looks like it's got a pigtail for plugging into a 120 outlet here um, it's already wired you don't have to worry about doing that it has a lock on it here it's got a battery backup and then you just open it up by pulling the tab here to get to where all of your wiring is going to be punched down here and installed. So we're going to go ahead and get this mounted up. So here's the mounting template. So we're going to figure out kind of where we're going to place it here. Um, this is the top of it. So I could probably be right around there. I want to be able to get my outlet cover open. This is a weatherproof box. So I'm going to install this screw first because this screw actually hangs the whole device on the block. And then these two here, these two holes, you'll actually, once you get it slid down on this screw here that you install first, then you can screw through the actual housing in through these two screws here, these two screw holes. So um, it does, you might want to pre-drill the plastic on the actual housing here because you'll be going in through here this hole and that one i'm using a 7 32nd drill bit so i'm going to go ahead and drill these two holes out right here you could probably i'm sure knock it out with the screwdriver that wasn't wasn't very hard plastic to get through use a torpedo level to level up this line right here so you get it level on the wall but actually if you're putting this in sheetrock you'll have to know where these holes are and you'll want those drilled out so you can install the wedge anchors that go in the sheetrock those plastic anchors but i'm not using those so you'll want to mark all three of these holes out if you're doing it in sheetrock so let's see, we got that pretty much level. So I'm just going to pull this off because that's not really need it anymore after that. You don't want to screw it in all the way. Because this, the back of it, is going to mount right on the screw head and then slide down. So now that we have the Orbit station timer installed we're going to go ahead and run the conductor wire that runs down to our valves to operate the valve so we're going to go ahead and install the wire all right so i've got a scrap piece of uh this is uh, tin conductor irrigation wire um, i don't need tin conductor for this because i've only got four controllers i do have some extra wires here for future just in case i want to expand um, since we've got four valves we only need five wires so we would need a five conductor wire to operate all four of these valves 
Um, so I have a conduit here that runs through this irrigation box into the greenhouse. Um, if you're interested in knowing how we built this irrigation box and, and put it all together, we have a separate video for that. And you can look down in the description. We'll have that link in there so you can see how we built this. So anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and start running this cable through the conduit. It's going to come up inside the greenhouse. So let's go ahead and push this in. All right, so here's the cable. It's coming up out of the, the foundation here. So I'm going to pull up enough to get me up to the controller. And then I'm going to try to install it nicely in here. All right, I'm going to go ahead and drill myself a hole here. Make it a nice clean install. So I'm going to use these plastic coax staples or quarter inch. These guys, they're for cable TV, but they'll fit nicely over the irrigation cable just to staple it down. So we're back at the valves. So I'm going to go ahead and put numbers. I'm going to number each valve. So when I wire it up, I know what I'm programming, how I'm going to program it in there, just so I know what valve is going to be number one, two, and three. So I'm just going to start at the left here. My valves, these valves are orbit valves. Um, each one, they come pre-assembled. It's kind of nice. I actually bought this one. It's a four valve set, but as you can see, I can add another set of two here, but it's not going to happen because it's a concrete wall here. But if you wanted to expand it, you just take this cap off and just throw another set of two in and just keep going with it. Um, the nice thing too about these valves is you can just take this cap off here in the winter. If you shut the water off, you can drain these out. Um, so, and then if you needed, if one of these failed, each one has a union here where you can undo it and pull the valve out and put a new one in. So you don't have to cut all the piping out. I've had to do that before. And I think that this setup here is, is superior than some of the others. Um, so anyhow, let's go ahead and label these. We got valve one. All right, so let's get our wiring here. Just kind of wrap it in here. So if you take some strippers or you can use a knife, what I usually do is there's usually a string inside behind the jacket here, the outer jacket. If you pull this off, you'll see the string. And what you'll do is you'll just take the string and pull it and it'll cut the jacket so you don't have to score all your wires using a razor. It works a lot nicer. That's plenty. So like I said, this is a 10 conductor. I don't need 10 conductor. I only need five. So what I'm gonna do here I'm going to pick out my wires that I'm going to use. The white wire will be my common. And then I'll just get five more wires here. So there's five. Oh, I'm sorry, four. So that'll be five, including the white. Then these others here, these other five wires, I'm just going to nicely wrap them around the cable here.
So that's what it'll look like. So just wrap those around it. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and bring this right up in through the center here. So the white will be the common. So how this works is each valve solenoid has two wires on it. As you can see here, they're both black. So it doesn't matter which wire you choose to go to the white. This is all low voltage. Let's get these unwrapped. So you'll, you'll pick a wire from each solenoid. I got four right here. So you're gonna pull off, you're gonna strip them back. Get all your wires all at the same length and then twist them together. Make sure they're, they're all together. You don't have one sticking back too far there to where when you go to put the cap on, you lose it. So now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna strip back these other wires with some strippers all right so this wire here your irrigation wire the stuff i'm using it's 18 gauge you're going to strip it back about oh an inch of wire here so the copper is showing that might be a little too much maybe three quarters just because of the wire nut that i'm using but we'll double check that once we get the wire net. Some of them are longer than others. Okay, so now we're gonna use, we're using these silicone filled wire nets by Drycon. Uh, they'll work on, uh, it goes from 22 gauge all the way to 12 gauge. So we're gonna need five wire nets particular wire nuts they're made for uh, in-ground connections they have uh, it's like a sealed connector at the end and it's got silicone or some of them have grease inside um, I found these ones to work fine they won't corrode and uh, cause a bad connection so let's go ahead and connect these wires up so I'll put the remaining ones over here all right so we got one wire off each solenoid pulled out. We're going to go ahead and take the white wire, which is our common. We're going to pull that down. This wire nut will definitely cover up all of the wire and just slide that on and twist it as you go. Twist it up nice and tight. You'll start to see silicone ooze out as you're tightening it. As you get it tight. All right. I'll just leave the excess there. And so now you're just going to choose which wire you're going to have go to point. We're just going to. Doesn't really matter for me. So we'll use red for number one. You'll just make note of it. So when you, we go in to land the wires at the irrigation controller, we'll know that red goes to valve position one. All right, so we've got the valves wired up. Um, I've got the wire nuts kind of standing straight up like that, just case. I mean, this this box was built. There's a ton of gravel in here, so this shouldn't fill up with water in any normal situation. But I mean, if if we do get a, an astronomical amount of water in here from rain, it could fill up. But anyhow, I just I'm just gonna go ahead and probably maybe just put some tape around that, just to tape the wire up. You can do whatever to try to make it as nice as you want, but. This is wired, so we're going to go ahead and wire up the controller. All right, so we stripped this cable back, and I wrapped the other wires that I may need in the future, or if a wire goes bad, you've got several extra here. It's always good just to have extra conductor. So we're going to go ahead and take the white wire, which is our common, and we're going to go ahead and land that. So I don't normally just cut the wire tight right up there. I usually leave just a little bit of slack just in case I need to move something down the road. So you're just gonna 
you're going to strip back the wire here. Go ahead and strip about a little half, a, half inch of jacket off the cable here, or each wire. All right, we'll go ahead and start with the white wire, which is our common. It's going to land on this white post here. So basically what you're going to do is take a small screwdriver. You're going to put it up in here, and this is spring-loaded. So you're just going to lift up on it down here in the bottom. You really can't see where the hole is. So you'll have to kind of feel for it, push it all the way up, and then release it. And then just make sure it's in tight, kind of give it a tug you'll know that you have it in the right spot because it won't pop out so all right we got the white wire landed and then we're just going to go valve one valve two valve three and valve four so it's pretty easy just write down what color goes to each valve and land your wire accordingly went ahead and did all four of the valves here so you can see red black brown green that might not be your color sequence so just whichever you're not going to mess it up if you get one swapped over the other it's just that when you turn on valve two if you mislabel it out there it'll turn on a, a different valve so that's the only thing so this is all low voltage you won't get shocked in any of this over here is where your 120 volts are once you plug it in and by the way you don't want to have it plugged in when you're working on it just wait till you're all done and then you can plug it into your outlet we're going to go ahead and pull this white tab this is a, a little there's a backup battery in here once you pull this it activates the battery so we'll go ahead and pull that out so you can kind of see it's now on and then we're going to go ahead and run our, our cord up to the outlet and plug it in all right we got it plugged into our weatherproof outlet and it's powered up we got 120 volts running to it the battery's activated so the battery what that's going to do for you is if the power, if you had loss of power in here, um, it'll keep the memory in the program settings. So it will not activate your solenoids on your valves, but it will keep the memory so you don't have to keep reprogramming. We've now reached the point where we need to go ahead and program this so that our valves will turn on when we want them to turn on. Uh, so again, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to have to of course set your clock so the clock up and down buttons here i'm just going to randomly go through some you can push the plus if you've gone too far you hit the minus uh, until you reach the time it is and then this right arrow here switches between a.m and p.m so for the sake of programming it doesn't really matter right now then we're going to switch this and now we're going to be setting the date. This currently is the year 2023. If it was a different year, again, plus and minus. Now you're gonna hit this arrow right here to switch to the month. And again, whatever your month is that you're currently in, plus and minus, or it'll just roll back around if you go past the 12 and rolls back around. And then again, with the same with the day. If you're going up because it's pretty low in the month, that's great. If you're towards the end of the month, you might wanna use the minus sign just so you hit those higher numbers quicker. And uh, then you just roll through that. So now we're gonna go to start time. What that means is what time do you want your first zone or station to start? I like to start ours um, early in the morning when no one is awake. So 5 a.m., great time to go ahead and start that first one. And that would be for station one. We have four stations, of course, one, two, three, and four, and it rolls back to station one. Currently, we do not have anything wired up for any of those other zones. We only have station one. But if we did have another zone, or another zone, or another zone, all four zones, you're going to wanna go ahead and start them. I would not recommend starting them at the same time. So if this was zone two, maybe I would start this 
let's say 520 or five, uh, let's say 530. If I had my station one running for 15 minutes, I don't want to start my second station while the first station is running or then I'm not getting enough water to both stations. So whatever you start those, make sure you start them at different times so that they're not running at the exact same time and that their times don't overlap. So those are just examples there. Now I run to my run time. Station one, how long do I want station one to run? Let's say I want it to run for 10 minutes. So I put there that I want it to run for 10 minutes. Station two, let's just say I want it to run for five minutes. It's just watering some flowers. How long do I want station three to run? Let's say three minutes and station four, we'll have it run for five. So that's how long you want it to actually water. And again, make sure that when you're setting those beginning times, that start time there, that whatever amount of time you're watering each one of those stations or zones, you don't want them to overlap. Now, how often? You can choose days here, and as you go through those days, if you hit the plus, that day becomes squared out, which means that it is now watering on Sunday. If, as you go through the days, you can do that. Now it gets to INT, which means interval. If I want my stations to run every single day, then I would probably just bypass this. I could square out every one of them and, so that it is watering, and I'll show you what I mean by that. I could go right here to Monday. I could go to Tuesday. Um, I could go to Saturday. I could I could make every single one of those zone out so that they're they are watering on the same day. But if I am doing that, I might as well just go to interval right there and just make sure it runs every one day, which means every single day it'll be running. If I want it to run every other day, then I would hit every two days. So that's letting you know how all of your zones, how often are you watering those? And then um, you can say that you want it to run every odd day. And if you go to odd, then you have to hit that plus sign so that it's an odd day. Or if you want it to run every even day. So those are examples there. Now budget, that is always set at 100%. And what that actually means is how much of the timed program is going to run. For an example, if you had it set for 10 minutes, it will run 100% of those 10 minutes. But if for one day you want it to run for 50%, 60, 70, 80, and 90% of that budgeted time, you can change that without having to actually go through and reprogram every and then of course, if I turn it to off, that means absolutely nothing in the system is working. So once I have set my system, I want to turn it to auto. And that way I ensure that whatever I set in this program, it's going to work and it will flash 5 a.m. Friday is going to be the first time my system comes on. Now, if I want to water it right now, let's say that I come out in the middle of the day and I see that my plants are really low on water, I can go ahead and just manually push enter. Right now it would be all zones or I can go straight to whatever station I want and I can say that I want it to run for three minutes and it will run right now for three minutes. If it was running and, it, and I notice it's got enough water in it, I can just push the clear. If you can hear it, my zone just turned on. But now if I say, you know, that's got enough water in it and I push clear, you'll hear it. It turns off. So I hope this helped you out. Thank you so much for watching this video and join us for the next You Can Do It video.